Good to see everybody. Um, so in terms of training camp, um, I want to just say thank you to our players uh, for the time and effort that they've put in. I uh, thought they've done a really good job. They came in with intent to get better, improve, uh, build chemistry. Um, and I thought you could see that through the duration of, of training camp this year. Uh, I want to thank our coaches and really all of our staff. Um, we really press hard on development. And I thought there were some really uh, cool situations where you saw guys come in as either, you know, a raw rookie or, you know, someone that wasn't playing to uh, the standard of what we needed. And then by the end of training camp, um, they were in the conversation of, of making the roster, which is always good to see. Um, also want to thank our performance team. And, and really, that's the alignment with Coach Flus. Um, our rate of, of missed practices uh, dropped significantly for the first two years. And obviously, with availability, that allows people to improve and, and get better and build that chemistry that we talk about. Also want to thank our front office. Um, you can really see uh, every part of player acquisition, if it's the draft, undrafted free agency, free agency at the very highest level to um, guys just coming in for opportunity at the you know minimum. Uh, they were in the mix and really, again, applied pressure when it came to making the roster. And, and really this year, uh, by far, from the first three years, was the most difficult time whittling this thing down to, to 53. Uh, we had some really good discussions, a lot of back and forth, constantly talking about, you know, worrying about today, um, but also looking into the future. Because um, we're always looking not only just now, but also what's the roster going to look like? What are the situations? Not you know one, two, three years from now. So had really good conversations there, which was good. Um, I think the other thing that I really learned this year is when you're intentional, bringing in the right type of people. When you invest in relationships, um, you invest in time and bonding and creating this this group and this culture. It makes cut down day uh, extremely hard, emotional. Um, because you care about the guys and you want to be want to see them be successful, but you know at the end of the day there's business decisions that have to happen, and you got to get this thing down to a 53-man roster, um, which was which was difficult. Uh, but I'm really proud of where we are uh, to kick this season off. Uh, significant improvements, um, which again makes me proud of the work that we've done here as an entire organization. Uh, in terms of transactions that have happened the last two hours, uh, Car is back on board, he's in the building, and Patrick Scales is going to be on IR um, until he heals up. So I'll open it to questions. All right, we look at the receiver room and the way you overhauled that from the time you've been here. You got here, it was pretty bare. You had Moon, not much else. His production kind of dipped. You took a swing and miss on a trade, and now you got the room that you have now, whereas Maybe two years ago, you couldn't find four guys you felt really good about. Now you feel like you maybe only need four guys. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, how do you go about overhauling that? And how do you feel about that process? Yeah, um, I think the big thing is there's there's a level of patience in there. Um, one, because when you approach it different, if it's free agency or the, the draft, um, we really try to do the best, best available. Um, and I remember that first year, um, that was a big question. Were you going to get a receiver? Are you going to get a receiver? And... We didn't have the first first round pick, and we end up with Brisker and and Kyler, and really we felt like that was the best available, and we knew that it was going to take time to really get all the pieces, and there's still uh, space for us to improve as well. Um, so we're just kind of in this kind of second phase of things, but really patience, um, letting the board kind of talk to us, and then being opportunistic, you know, with the trade, drafting Rome. Um, there's a lot of cool things that, that happen. So, and we used every every different kind of way to acquire that talent, which was great. We saw, Ken, we saw Keenan was on the bike today. Is there any concern about his health? For no, no. He had uh, last week like a cleat issue, uh, so some discomfort in his foot, but he should be fine. Brian, as you evaluate the season and look to measure success, is it playoffs in your mind? Is that the ultimate measure for you? Or do you look at the roster development side more so and say that's kind of the priority for this year? No, like, obviously, that's that's my priorities. Let's get the roster in the best shape possible because that's going to give us the opportunity to win games. Um, but it's always going to be to win championships, um, to win the division, win Super Bowls. That's always the goal. Um, obviously, getting in the playoffs and, and winning playoff games would be outstanding. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is, like, can we take that big jump from where we were last year 
uh, to this year, and I think we're capable of doing that. As you look at that 53-man roster from what you inherited, what are you most proud of about this group and how they've come together? Yeah, uh, I'm proud of I'm proud of the process that we've set up. Um, it's not just about acquiring the best talent; it's about acquiring the right talent. And I think that's what you see um, in this building. I think it's it's special. Like the group of guys, it's it's really special. I know I've talked a lot about that, but even when you go through cut down days and you're letting guys go and they're like, man, I just want to be here. Like I can feel it. Uh, I want to be a part of this thing. Uh, so it's not like I always look at it and I'm excited about it. But when you hear from people inside the building, uh, but also outside, it kind of makes you feel really good about the progress that you've made. But um, a lot of hard work, a lot of time um, and developing the process so that it's sustainable. Brian, as, as you've continued both your relationship with Matt and, and your evaluation of him, what's left the strongest impression on you about how he's handled the last eight months from overhauling the coaching staff to now getting this team ready to go into the regular season? Yeah, I think his resilience um, for how, for where our roster was and for how far we knew it had to go to set a standard and hold everybody to that um, is extremely difficult. Uh, to keep a team together through adversity is extremely difficult. But I think at the end of the day, that's going to be awesome. Is like those things will be established, and then when the winning comes, you have a stronger product because of it. And so, really, I really look at the resilience piece of it. It's so hard with pressure to stay the course um, when. You want to be, you know, there's a lot of noise in terms of doing different things and changes and all that, but to hold the line is, it, it, it takes a special man to do that, and he's done that. And then just the ability to adapt and adjust. Um, you can see that on a daily basis, um, always trying to get better. Taking the feedback from players, you know, what do we need to change? What do we need to adjust? What are you guys seeing? How are you feeling? And then making the tweaks. Um, that relationship is, has been incredible. And then I probably had a third thing is it's kind of coming to me, but just investing in relationships. Uh, he's had every single person on our team over at his house um, to spend time there, to get to know them better. There's activities and things that he did, but that was done intentionally. That wasn't just to do it and check a box. It was to really invest in our players and build that trust because you need that. You got a number of guys banged up on the offensive line, but we saw Bill Murray go off. How comfortable are you with the depth you have at that position? Um, this, this is the best depth I've, I've ever had. Um, actually let one of the guys go on cut downs and was like, man, you did an excellent job. I wish, you know, we could, could keep you here. It just, he's like, this is the deepest room I've ever been a part of. Um, so we have more versatility, more depth. Um, shoot, we got 10 guys. So I feel comfortable. Um, obviously you want your starting five to be healthy and ready to go, but uh, I feel more confident in the depth of our line than I ever have before. Ryan, we've seen a, we've seen a lot from Caleb on the field, but in the building, what have you seen to be the effect of his personality, uh, of his social skills, his yeah. ability to relate with others? Yeah, it's it's fairly natural. Uh, it's not forced. I think that's one thing, and we've all been in teams before, but like, there's people that come into those situations and they try too hard. And it's like, man, that's awkward. You know, it's hard to buy into that. And then there's guys that just, they, they, can, they can navigate that so naturally because they're authentic and it's real and that's what he's done and they, and then on top of that just as in a, as a professional player like you have to perform you got to do some things that guys are like okay like like there's something different about you and then pair that with a good natural just good social skills um some cool things happen and leadership starts to blossom and that's what you see now what do you expect from him this year um i expect him to a great question. I, I want him to lean on the talent around him and then when the time is right and that's an instinctual thing and I think that plays right into him, that's when you do the, the special and balancing that and then sometimes it's going to get out of whack one way or the other but always come back to that. It's kind of like that, that neutral place where he's at his best. Um, and I think he has that just from studying him and, and watching uh, years of tape on him. He, he has that ability. And um, so I think that that's kind of the, the big thing is just lean on the guys around him, be instinctual, 
let that, those wild plays happen at the right time. I mean, we've, we saw it in the preseason a little bit. Okay. Um, this can be important. Sorry, back to the old line. Yeah. How good can that unit be? You, you made some moves this offseason. I don't think yeah. you can point at it and say you put a ton of resources into it. Like, how, how good can that group be? Uh, I think the group can be really good. Um, in terms of investing in it, I mean, Darnell was a first-round pick. We traded for Bates, who has versatility. Uh, paid Nate, um, who obviously needs to continue to work on just the dependability and, and consistency. Coleman Shel Shelton's have been a great addition. Uh, he's a glue guy for the up front. His ability to get everybody on the same page and then execute at a high level has been been really good. Um, I think Braxton's improved, um, and and Tevin is is playing his best ball too. So I think that that group has the ability to be, be special. Um, and as the season goes along, and the beautiful thing is they're all those guys strain. Um, and you can see that in the preseason too, just trying to keep Caleb clean. Um, it's important to him, and it's a really strong net group, so it's good. Ryan, I'm pretty sure we've seen you on the field kind of mimicking Caleb's throwing motion. you never seen that. <laughs> I don't know what else you could have possibly been doing with that. Yeah. Uh, was it fun for you? Was it a fun training camp for you to see this guy that you had – scouted for so long and drafted and then brought here and then watching it in person every day. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's fun. Um, but I, I don't know, I just, I can't ever let my mind go too far down that road. It's always about improving. Um, but it, it's it's good to see anytime you, you draft a player because of what you saw from college and you see some of those things transfer over to the pro game, that, that gets you excited. Um, if it's the other way, it scares the crap out of you. You know, it's like, where did that guy go? Um, and we haven't had that with really any of our, our draft picks. Everybody has been as advertised or if, if not better. Right. 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 As, as you try to grow Caleb into a quarterback who can be a game-winning quarterback with the game on the line, from your lens, what separates the best quarterbacks in this league in terms of the ones that are consistently productive in the fourth quarter? Um, I think it's really, I look at, I kind of say it's like their heartbeat. Like, does their heartbeat skyrocket in those pressure situations, or do you see this like calm? And and we're not going to know until we're in it in terms of the the pro side of it. Um, but that's what I look for. I want the game to slow down, there to be a level of poise. And again, I'll go back to it, it's that same combination of taking what a defense gives you, leaning on your talent, and then when you're forced to be special, be special. What did you experience with Patrick through that lens in terms of when you <coughs> realized that he was that guy in Kansas City and in terms of what it did for the entire organization? Yeah, so it's interesting because I know there's a lot of comparis comparisons out there, but I don't I don't know what Patrick's rookie year would have looked like. Um, but I know in year two, you saw exactly that when, when the pressure went up. He was calm. And then when it was time to do something special, he was able to do it and, and connect. But I also think, you know, we probably don't talk about it enough. He really gave opportunities for special players to be special. Um, and I think that's what took it over the, over the edge. Thanks, guys.